Okay, I'm going to try to explain pointer variables to you, and you're gonna have to stick with me because it's kind of a mess to explain. The best way to really get a feel for this is just to start coding and working with it, but it's good to have heard all of this information that I'm about to tell you before you actually get to that. So we have two types of variables in C++, which is a gross oversimplification, I am aware. But we have a normal variable, which is just a data type, like use static mesh that we have here, or a float, or whatever you want. And we have pointers. And pointers point to wherever the memory address is of another variable. So what we can do here is if we have, I'm just going to use some f vectors as an example. We have a vector and we'll call that the location. That's just the location in the world for this actor, just as an example. Then we can also make, if we really wanted to, which uh, I also need to capitalize the V in vector, we can make an F vector pointer, which you just do by adding a little star after the data type here. And we'll call that a location pointer. Now, that location pointer is just a simple, very cheap variable that will not take up too much of your uh, RAM. So if for any reason you need to reference this variable in a different location, you can make a pointer, and instead of having to copy over the entirety of everything to do with this F vector, or something that's a lot more heavy, like your entire player character, which might be entire megabytes of information. Instead of having to copy over all of that data into a different place in memory, what we can just do is make a very simple variable here that will point to the place where this is stored in memory. That way we can access it directly rather than making a copy. Because if we try to, for instance, use this in a function, what it will do is it will make a copy of this variable, use that in the function, and then return yet another copy. So instead, if we make a function that takes in a pointer, it doesn't need to make a copy, it can just use the actual original data. And especially if you need to change something about that data, if you have a function that makes a copy of this location, then changes something and returns a copy, the original location vector isn't actually going to get changed. For that, you're going to need to actually point towards that specific place in memory. So, for example, let's just make a function uh, increase vector, something like that. And that's going to take in a f vector, uh, vector to increase. Let's create an implementation for that. So now, and uh, I can't really show you this in here, I probably should have just made an empty C++ file. Well, that's a little too late now. We can still do that, maybe. Just believe me when I say that this works the way I'm telling you. How it works okay fine good because if we now uh take our vector to increase i'm just going to copy it over because i'm lazy and we try to add to that a f vector of just one 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 for instance you might think okay we can pass in a vector here and then it's going to add one to the x the y and the z for our vector and no, no, that's not how that works at all. Uh, because when you call this function uh, somewhere else, like in begin play, like increase vector, and we had a member variable here just called location, uh, that's not actually gonna do anything. Because what it's gonna do is it's going to call this function, it's going to use a copy of this, and increase that copy, and then by the end of this function, the function is done, so anything that was created in this function is going to get deleted, and nothing actually happened. You just wasted some computer resources with no output. Now, what we can do instead is instead of passing in a location directly, we will pass in a vector pointer. So let's change this to a vector pointer. And now we need to pass in a pointer, which is a memory address. For that, we need to change a couple of things. First and foremost, we're not going to pass in the location, we're going to pass in the location pointer, and then we can't add a vector to a pointer, because the pointer is not a vector, obviously. So what you can do is you can put 
a star, much like you have a star at the end of your data type to make it a pointer. If you put one at the front of your variable name, that dereferences things and makes it go from a pointer back to it treating it as if it's that variable. And now this is actually taking in whatever vector we are pointing to and adding one, one, one to it because we're using a pointer. But how do we give this pointer a value? Because now we're we're declaring a location pointer variable, that's fine, but it doesn't have any value. And if you run this, it's actually going to crash your game because it's referencing a null pointer. And if it's a null pointer, meaning a pointer without any information in it, uh, yeah, the engine or, or your computer in general does not like that. So we can give this a value by saying it's equal to the address of, which is this n% percent sign, uh, this location variable. And you will see that works entirely fine. So we make a, a factor pointer and we say this pointer is equal to whatever memory location this variable is at. So in theory, for what we're doing here, we can entirely skip uh, making this variable as well because you can just do this in your code uh, right away. So instead of passing in the location pointer, what we can do is we can just pass in the f vector location, uh, but we just pass in the address of location. And this will now pass through the pointer, which is the memory address of this variable, into this, and it will work perfectly fine. Hey there, this is me in the middle of editing this video, and I forgot to mention one relatively important thing. And that is, if you're used to any sort of programming, this is my own code for my own game that I'm scrolling through right now, you might see something that seems slightly weird to you. And that is, usually if you have a variable, so I'm just going to, again, make a f vector here, which we'll just call vector real quick, you use a dot operator to get anything that is stored inside of that data type, be it the x, y, z coordinates or any of the methods that you can find on it. But the difference being is if you are using a pointer, so if we make a pointer out of this and I use the dot operator, you will see it turns it into this little arrow instead. And that is because Visual Studio Code is nice enough to do that for me, not every IDE will maybe do this, so it's still good to be aware of this. If you are working with a point variable, you don't use a dot to get something out of it, you use an arrow instead, which is just a dash and a greater than sign. Again, with Visual Studio Code, that will just automatically do that for you, and you don't have to worry about it, but it is something worth mentioning. So now let's get back to the video. Again, if this doesn't quite click for you, uh, it doesn't for a lot of people. Uh, for some people, this is second nature and they just right away make sense. If it doesn't quite click for you though, don't worry about it. A lot of people struggle with quite getting this at the start. So don't worry, now that you've heard all this information, as we go along and we do a little bit more coding and we do a little bit more experimenting with C++ code, it's going to start clicking into place at some point. As you're playing with it yourself, you're going to start realizing how this all works. And by and large, like I showed you in a previous video, when the engine expects a pointer, it will just scream at you when you're not giving it a pointer and you just make a pointer out of it with the ways I've shown you in this video and the other way around as well. If you're accidentally making a pointer and the engine is expecting something that is not a pointer, it will just scream at you and you can just dereference it in this way, for instance. So you will be fine. You're working in such a tightly constructed framework that Unreal is providing you. You can't really do anything catastrophically wrong with all of this memory mumbo jumbo. It'll be fine. Next time, Let's actually dive into some proper coding and maybe we'll make some movement or something. I'm not entirely sure what we're going to do yet, but we're going to do some actual coding now that I've explained all the very much basic things about C++. And a very big thank you to all of my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help out supporting the channel, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon page. And a special thank you to Eleanor for supporting at the Cave Digger tier on Patreon.